Hi, this is uh, Alistair Ross here of the Ultimate Linux Newbie Guide showing you how to install Ubuntu 18.10 on a MacBook Pro. This particular MacBook Pro over on the far right hand side of the picture is the machine in question and it is a late 2013 i7 based uh, MacBook Pro. So I have in front of me the USB stick which I've already prepared with the ISO image of Ubuntu 18.10. There is nothing special about this particular um, ISO, it's just the standard x64 version of Ubuntu. So I'm going to take this one over to the machine, I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to start it up. Now to start up the machine from a USB stick or any other type of medium you have to hold down the option key on the keyboard of the MacBook Pro. You'll also notice that I've got two monitors plugged into this thing because yeah because I'm a geek and I have two monitors. So so without further ado I'll show you step by step with armed with my USB stick. Here we go. Locked and loaded. Power button and wait for that uh, that that tone, the Mac OS Marm chime. Holding down the Alt Option button, you might be able to make out there that I've got a little symbol. It's pretty hard to work out, but I'll just uh, zoom over there, and you you might be able to make out there that it says EFI. So there's a normal Macintosh hard drive on the left hand side there, a middle icon that says EFI, and another one that says EFI boot. What we are going to do is we're just interested in the EFI boot, the first one there. So instead of starting up from Macintosh HD, I'm going to start up from EFI boot. So in order to do that, I can either click it with the mouse or I can use the left and right cursor keys. So I'll select this one here and I'll click on EFI boot. Up comes this uh, grub menu in text here. It's way too small for you to see on the Retina display, but basically there are a number of options here. Try Ubuntu without installing, install Ubuntu, and a couple of other options there as well. Using the down cursor key here, the down arrow, press push down once and it will choose install Ubuntu. Now of course if you want to try this out without installing, please just pr press return. But we're going to install Ubuntu this time, so let's hit the return key on the install Ubuntu option. After a few moments, it's going to boot up into the main install screen, and we'll see what that looks like. All right, there. Well, you can see that uh, fundamentally, we've got three monitors running here, which is which is a good sign, um, because sometimes we don't get the graphic support uh, straight out of the box, but. This problem has haunted me for quite some time with every Mac install I've ever done. Uh, out of the box you can see a few things. First of all, if, I don't know if you can make out the mouse cursor there, but I'll zoom in just to show you where the mouse cursor is now. If I turn left, yep, I see it on the left hand side monitor. But if I go to the far right, you'd expect it to go onto the Mac monitor. Well, it doesn't. Out of the box, what you get is you have to take it to the left. If I keep going on the left hand side, you'll see it goes to the Mac laptop monitor. So I'm going to drag that over to my other monitors here, and you can see how chunky it is. The resolution on the displays hasn't ever really worked that well for me. But anyway, that's something we can deal with later on, but for now, let's just, uh, let's just deal with that and work through the installation. I'll use the high uh, uh, resolution display, the retina display, so I'll just zoom in on that for now. Okay, so the options they are presented to me are showing install, and first of all, they're showing me which language that I would like to use. Of course, in my case, I can just about speak English, so I'll choose English as the language that I want to use. Next up, I have to choose the keyboard layout, and in this case I'm using an English US keyboard. Now, it's asking me uh, what type of installation I want to make at this point in time. Uh, it says updates and other software. We want to choose 
a normal installation. There is an option below that says minimal installation. We are not going to choose that one uh, because we, we want the whole Ubuntu experience right out the back. Uh, there is an option for other uh, aspects to download here. You can see download updates whilst installing Ubuntu. Um, this saves time after the installation. And then finally here the checkbox for install third party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats. I strongly recommend ticking that box because that gives you things like MP3 support. Um, but it might have copyright license. But we'll say yes to that option there. When you're ready Press the continue button on the right hand side. Now, on this machine, I've actually already partitioned it before. Um, what I will do is refer you to the guide on partitioning your MacBook Pro with, um, with your computer on the installation guide that I have a comprehensive installation guide on the website uh, www.linuxnewbieguide.org but for now I'm going to choose another one of these options okay so I'll show you what we need to do here so the options here for me are at the top erase Ubuntu and reinstall install Ubuntu 18.10 alongside Ubuntu 17.04, erase disk and install Ubuntu and there are a number of other options as well. In this particular case I already have a previous version of Ubuntu so I've got Mac OS and I've got Ubuntu so in my case I want to choose erase Ubuntu 17.04 and reinstall so it's already picked up that I've got Ubuntu on there. So as I say, if you want to check out the website www.linuxnewbieguide.org it will tell you all about how to partition your hard drive so you can still hold on to Mac OS and allow installation of Linux alongside. So in this case it's fairly straightforward. I want to choose Ubuntu 17.04 and reinstall. Now if, if you wanted to you know, resize the partitions or something like that you can go into that something else and look at the partition manager and I can show you just just briefly what that looks like so you can see the primary hard drive there dev sda and then at the beginning of the um, the partition there's this thing called EFI EFI is a partition you shouldn't mess with that is the, basically the bootloader area of the Mac uh, so it allows you to choose between um, the, the operating system that you, you run so leave anything that says EFI effectively on the hard drive if it's already there you want to leave it well alone HFS plus that partition there, in this case it's um, I think it's 450 gig big. That one there is the Macintosh uh, a Mac OS partition. You can tell that by the file system type which is HFS plus. So if you're looking, at all Mac partitions are HFS um, in, in type. Down here we've got um, an EXT4 partition and then we've also got SDB. SDB happens to be the USB stick that we've got installed so you can completely ignore that. This EXT4 partition here, EXT4 is a Linux file system and you can see it's actually labeled Ubuntu 17.04 right there. Um, that's the one there that we want to blow away effectively in this case and, and, uh, and install with Ubuntu 18.10. So I'm just going to go back, uh, but obviously if you wanted to have, if you had free space there uh, or you had resized this partition here to give you some free space, you could install Ubuntu on that free space. So that's the general idea of what you want to do if you don't already have Linux on your machine. Go into the macOS disk utility, resize your, your, your main macOS partition down so you've got some free space left over at the end of the disk. That then allows you to install Ubuntu or any other type of Linux onto the end of the disk. So in this case, I've already done that, and that free space is or that space is there. Just imagine that was free space. So I'll go press back because I know what I want to do. I want to install it over the 1704 installation that I previously had. Here's erase Ubuntu 1704 and reinstall. So as it's, it says down below, it says, Warning, this will delete all your Ubuntu 17.04 programs, documents, photos, music, and any other files. All right. So if you wanted to keep all those files, um, you can actually um, uh, dual boot between 17.04 and 18, uh, 18.10. But that will take up some extra space. I don't want to do that at this point in time. So I'm just going to hit install now. 
If you continue, it says, this is just a warning, it says if you continue, the changes are going to be read, uh, written to disk. Um, and so what it's going to do is it's going to change partition 3 of the uh, drive SDA and format it EXT4. If you recall, the third partition, when I showed you that partition uh, manager, the editor there, was uh, was indeed the ext4 partition that already exists so it's just basically going to say, it's saying there i'm going to format that partition that you've got linux on already and i'm going to put this new version of ubuntu on it i'm happy with that i'll press continue now you choose your time zone it's fairly self-explanatory um, although i don't sound like i'm from new zealand i live in uh, wellington so i'm going to press uh, on the auckland part of the, t the world here and i'm going to put my name in so once uh, you've typed in all of those things, you should be good to go. So just briefly, my name, a machine name that I would like to give it. So in this case, I've just called it Mac Linux. A username that you'd like to have and the password that you'd like to have for that user. Uh, the one thing to say about um, the computer name, it can be pretty much anything. And the username, just bear in mind that whatever username you choose here, that is the administrative user of this machine. Just to say basically that this user has all of the superpowers of the machine. Other users, by default that you make, will not be uh, sort of administrator users. So bear that in mind when you create a user account. I'm just going to choose to continue now and the installer kicks in at that point. Um, it will go on and it will tell you all about the new features of Ubuntu 18.10 in this little box whilst it installs all the files and good stuff in there. Um, just to quickly zoom through these things you can see that it offers even more software. It's got a, a, a great uh, software um, application store so just like you're used to on your um, on your Mac the app store not maybe on your phone as well the app store there you find a plethora of applications available on the um, Linux Ubuntu um, application store and so interestingly Ubuntu have gone down a line now of being able to make applications which you wouldn't normally associate with being available in Linux things like Skype by Microsoft for example they're available within the snap packages which are available also in the uh, application store. Um, <clears throat> there's a bit about the pre-installed software with Linux as well with this particular version of Ubuntu per, uh, for example the Rhythmbox music player which works very like um, Apple's iTunes. Also there's a photo editor um, called Shotwell, there's also the GIMP image editor and the TV video editor. So you get all this great software installed right out of the box with your uh, Linux installation. Finally uh, there is the, uh, the, the different pieces of software that comes with uh, the installation by default Firefox is the, is the web browser you can also install Flash or Chromium and if you want to you can download the official Chrome web browser from Google's website um, it does come pre-installed with LibreOffice which is compatible with Microsoft Office formats so you've got um, the writer, the calc and the um, impress uh, presentation software that's it. It's, uh, it's hardly taken any time at all to install this operating system. Um, I've noticed um, that even on slightly older machines, uh, such as this one here from late 2013, although it is an i7 with 16 gig of RAM, the installation there flies by. So um, it would be really interesting to see how this operates on this slightly older machine. Uh, and so far, the experience that I've seen on normal PC hardware has been really good. It works very fast. So when you're ready, hit that restart now button and it will eventually prompt you to remove the USB media from the, uh, the box. So it says please remove the installation medium and then press enter. So we'll do that. USB stick out. Press enter on the keyboard. Let's see what happens. So one thing you will need to do unless you've installed a utility called Refind is that to, to run your macOS installation rather than do, uh, boot from Ubuntu, if you want to start up your machine in macOS, when you press the power button, hold down the Alt key when you hear the, um, the macOS boot, um, and you'll get that familiar two-screen dialog again. Uh, but rather than the uh, USB stick that you saw before, or the EFI boot that you saw before, the little yellow symbol, you're going to see a picture of two hard drives. If you choose the left option that says Macintosh HD, 
that will enable you to boot up your normal Mac OS partition. If you choose the one on the right, that just says EFI boot. That is the um, Ubuntu partition, and you'll see it starting up Ubuntu as normal there. Uh, so that's just a little uh, word to the wise. Um, if, don't freak out when you try and restart your Mac and all you see is Ubuntu. The way in to choose which machine you want to boot is simply made by um, holding down the Alt key or Alt Option key when you start up your machine. Now that was pretty fast, as you can see there, it's restarted the entire Mac and it's brought up the main uh, Ubuntu system. Just like that, it's really, really quick to boot. That's something I've really noticed that has a, has a major change within Ubuntu uh, 18.10. It's the fastest Ubuntu I've seen yet, so really, uh, really big change there with speed. Just pop my password in there. I've got some troubles with my Bluetooth keyboard, so I'll have to get that set up, so I'll do that in a moment. So I'm just signing in now. And there you go, the Ubuntu desktop is ready to rock and roll. Well, as I said, the first thing that I wanted to get set up was my uh, Bluetooth keyboard. I've got a Logitech Bluetooth K480 keyboard. So to get into the control panel, or whatever you want to call it, you click on the right hand side up here by the, uh, the, the battery icon and down here is a sort of um, spanner and a screwdriver icon that's for the settings or control panel. Up pops the control panel and you can see all the options down to the left you can see if I click through those plenty of different options. The one at the top just so happens to be Bluetooth and you can see straight away my Logitech keyboard. I've put the keyboard into discovery mode so it's flashing away telling me it's ready to pair. I'll just click on that and now it's telling me to enter that code into the keyboard 977050 and then return. Looks like it's set up, so that's fantastic. Now I should be able to, yep, I'm able to um, press buttons on it, so that's fantastic. All right, let's have a look at some other options. As I've said in the past, one of the big problems I have had with uh, the Mac is the displays. Because we've got such a lovely high display, high uh, resolution display, on the more recent Macs, including even this 2013 model, they have what's called the Retina display. They have had problems um, with scaling. Now, the problem uh, here, as you can see, is that the normal resolution monitors, which are not high resolution monitors, they uh, are too chunky. So let's just zoom out of the picture, and I'll show you what I mean. So I don't know if it's if it's uh, if it's really that easy for you to see, but there are three monitors there and on the left you can see that it says number three and on the right you can see the Mac um, laptop is, uh, Mac, uh, is the display number one. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do here is see if I can um, make the displays work properly. So as you can see on the right hand side here We've got a fairly high resolution display and I'll pull it over to the right hand side which is obviously not the way it's supposed to be going but you can see just how chunky that display is. It shouldn't be that big, right? So I'll zoom in again just to show you uh, what, the, what the laptop looks like now. I've tried and dropped that display from left to right like that. Okay, so I'll drag that there, press apply and then hopefully um, everything works. Now, interestingly, what I did there is I had to go off and unplug the secondary display, this one here, um, because uh, the monitor just wouldn't uh, recognize itself after it uh, got repositioned. Uh, but uh, all's well, it ends well, and you can see now that uh, the monitor is back in, uh, in working fashion. All right, the next, uh, next item down to have a look at is the orientation uh, and the resolution. Now, on this um, primary display here, number one, you can see that the scale 
option here is set to 200% by default. Now I'm going to change that down to 100% and we'll see what happens when I do that. Straight away you can see that things are really tiny on this display and that's because it's changed the resolution scaling so that it's finally the, the size to which it is um, on the on the original retina display. So you can see on, on the retina display obviously we get really high resolution but that's too small to read. Over the left hand side however you can see that that window now looks proper. Uh, you can see that it, it's a resolution of 1080 by 1050 or 16 by 10. So for now what I'm going to do is just leave the displays as is. We've got the high resolution display on the right which is uh, pretty difficult to see that um, that resolution uh, but I, fortunately for me I don't actually use that monitor all that much and then on the left hand side these two monitors uh, are at their native resolutions now what I also did is decided that my primary would display would be this um, this Dell uh, display on the left hand side here um, which is um, display number three and the way I did that is just change the dis prim primary display here from the drop down um, it was built in display and I've changed it to number three which is the Dell monitor there yeah, so that's really it for the displays uh, you can go back and fiddle around with all the other settings and I'll let you do that in your own time um, uh, so now you know how to get the uh, Bluetooth working and you also know how to get the, uh, the primary display working. Uh, there are a number of other things you want to know and that is all about um, how to get various aspects of the MacBook Pro's features going and we'll talk about those next. Right, so unless you're very lucky, what you're going to find is when you get your Mac installed with Ubuntu Regardless of whatever version of Ubuntu you've installed, uh, and even other Linux distributions, you're probably going to find that the Wi-Fi doesn't work. Now, uh, that kind of causes you a problem, because one of the first things you want to do is get online and do stuff. So, there are a few options you can go around to get, to get your Wi-Fi working. One of the options is to download some stuff from somewhere else on the internet. Um, one of the other options is use your mobile phone and Wi-Fi tether it uh, so you can set it up via Bluetooth and do that I found that whole process very excruciatingly slow so I opted for a more basic one and that option is simply to get a USB adapter and uh, put it onto good old Ethernet if you don't have that option available to you there are a few other ways um, but they're a bit more tricky, so you want to go and research them. You can find more information on the website www.linuxnewbieguide.org. Okay, so I've plugged in my Ethernet connection, and as you can see, I'm on the internet already, but I really want to get that Wi-Fi driver working. So, first thing you need to do is launch a piece of software which is built in to Ubuntu, and it's called Software and Updates and you can see it there. I've just hit the start button on the keyboard by the way there to bring up this launcher. Type in start and updates uh, or just uh, software and updates sorry I just typed in SOF and brought it up there and you can see this um, menu that comes up here in software and updates. Now um, what you can do is you can tick on basically any of these boxes and just untick it and then retick it so and I'm going to untick this proprietary drivers just to tell it to do something. Put my password in. That's it unticked. Now I'm just going to close. And then it says the information about this available software is out of date and it wants me to reload. So all that's doing is just basically forcing it to download the latest um, information about the app. Uh, cache from uh, the internet which is something it hasn't actually been able to do because during the installation it had no connection to the internet whatsoever I didn't have any ethernet cable connected at the time and that was deliberate just to show you what happens when you don't have a network connection in so now I'm going to go back into that software and updates and you can see it's untacked I'm going to tick it again And now I'm also going to go along to additional drivers. 
and you can see now here it says no additional drivers are available. If we take on other software and allow Canonical partners and updates in here, it should be okay. That's yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I'm just going to basically go to the other software tab there, make sure all of these are available apart from source code. And uh, once I've done that, basically I can go to close. And it'll say that out of date thing again. I press reload. It'll update that information as well. So that's basically allowing us software from all of the different partners. And uh, it's now telling me that there's um, software updates to go in as well. Um, so basically, I'm going to allow those updates to install. Uh, that will take some time. Okay, so now I've performed the update. I went into software updates and so forth, and I let it download all the packages. That took about, oh... Yeah, a good 15 minutes because there was a whole lot of updates I had to do. But now the machine is um, up to date, it's time to install those proprietary drivers which it's downloaded over the Ethernet network connection. So I'm just going to press the uh, start key again and type in um, soft, uh, sorry, software and updates. So back into that same dialog that we saw before. And you can see here software and updates, all of the same settings that there were before. If we go along to additional drivers, before we noticed that there wasn't any available, but now it's managed to pick up a few things, namely the graphics card and also the wireless network adapter. And you can see down here it says do not use this device. What we want to do is simply select use the Broadcom 80211 Linux STA wireless driver and that will install the driver here if we press apply changes. So let's just do that there. Again you'll need to pop in your administrator password which is just your own password. Let that install and then you should be able to um, use your machine with Wi-Fi as normal after that. So if you've managed to get Wi-Fi uh, working you'll know that by clicking on the icon up here and you'll note that it says Wi-Fi not connected. Click on that, select the network that you want to use and then put in your Wi-Fi password and then that should be you on the Wi-Fi network. There you go. Um, so um, if you are still having issues um, then do check out the website www.linuxnewbieguide.org uh, the page that you want to look for is how to install Linux on a Macintosh and dual boot with macOS. So just go up to the search button there and type in Mac or something like that and you should get it. If you scroll down, it's a big page, it goes from start to finish, tells you all about um, sorting out your uh, Mac, uh, all the things that you might need to do to get it working. Uh, down here there's a section that says some of the other things you might need to do. Um, and um, that one part here is around Wi-Fi. It tells you how to install um, the Wi-Fi drivers at the terminal. However, in more recent versions of Ubuntu, especially with this 18.10 and, and 18.4 before it, doesn't seem that you need to go to the terminal anymore. Also, um, the official sort of documentation on lots and lots of different types of Broadcom drivers, obviously because every single MacBook Pro has a different um, Wi-Fi configuration, albeit just slightly. Uh, you can have a look at for all of the different information about the Broadcom Wi-Fi drivers uh, on the Ubuntu website. That's help.ubuntu.com forward slash community forward slash Wi-Fi docs forward slash driver, forward slash BCM43XX. And of course, I'll put this in the commentary on the website. Um, there's also another uh, shorter page, which um, I'll, I'll provide as well um, on askubuntu.com. All right, so now we've got Wi-Fi going. Let's have a look into other things as well. So back on our um, main page, uh, it said obviously Wi-Fi was one of the things. There's the graphics and NVIDIA display. Now as you can see out of the box here things have greatly improved in Ubuntu um, with 18.10 uh, and you can see that it's also picked up on the fact that um, this has got a, you know, a specific to Mac um, version of the NVIDIA graphics card. If you are interested in um, 
you know, having the latest version of um, the graphics card driver to give you extra graphics performance, then you should select one of these options here. Um, this one here particularly should be the one that you'd want to go for. So, uh, but if you have any problems with it, then you can choose this one. Uh, using NVIDIA driver meta package from NVIDIA driver 390. It's proprietary, it says, but it is tested by the Ubuntu community. So that's why I would say that that one's the one that you want to go for. Me personally, I don't really generally tend to need any of the accelerated graphics stuff and that therefore um, does enhance my battery life somewhat. So I, in actual fact, I don't usually use it. I just leave the standard XOR driver. So if you don't need it either, just leave that well alone. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll leave you to um, play around and if you have any questions on this, please just let me know in the comments and I'll help you out as much as possible. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure for everything you need to know about getting used to Linux in any way, shape or form to hit us up on the website. Really do appreciate your feedback, uh, your, your sharing of the, the website with all the other friends. Um, just remember the URL www.linuxnewbieguide.org Thanks very much for watching.